It's okay, baby. during this dispute with Russia as not understanding President Putin's motivation. As recently as last month, you and others in your administration said you thought Putin was reflecting or pausing his incursion into Crimea. Did you misread Putin's intentions, and what do you think his motivations are now? And if I could just quickly ask on NSA, when you spoke about the NSA review in January, you said you weren't sold on the option of having phone companies hold metadata, and you thought it raised additional privacy concerns. What has changed for you on that matter since that time, and do you think Congress will pass the legislation you're seeking? And, Mr. Prime Minister, there are leaders in Europe who have concerns about the sector sanctions the President has proposed on Russia's economy. Do you think any of those leaders have been have had their concerns alleviated during their talks with the President over the past few days? Thank you. All right. Let me see if I can remember all these. Um, with respect to President Putin's motivation, I think there's been a lot of speculation. I'm less interested in motivation and more interested in the facts and the principles that not only the United States but uh, the entire international community are, are looking to uphold. Uh, I don't think that any of us have been under any illusion that uh, you know, Russia has been very interested in controlling what happens to Ukraine, that's not new. That's been the case for years now. Uh, that's been the case dating back to the Orange Revolution. Um, but what we have said consistently throughout this process is that it is up to the Ukrainian people to make their own decisions about uh, how they organize themselves uh, and who they interact with. And it's always been our belief that Ukraine is going to have a relationship to Russia. There is a strong historic bond between the two countries. Uh, but that, that does not justify Russia encroaching on Ukraine's territorial integrity or sovereignty. Uh, that's exactly what's happened. Uh, 
And I said very early on that should Russia do so, there would be consequences. And working with our European partners and our international partners, we have put in place uh, sanctions that uh, have already had some impact on the Russian economy. Now, moving forward, you know, we have said, and I want to be very clear about this, we're not recognizing uh, what has happened in Crimea. The notion that uh, a referendum sloppily organized over the course of two weeks uh, would somehow justify uh, the breaking off of Crimea and the annexation by Russia. Uh, you know, that somehow that would be a valid process, I think the overwhelming majority of the world rejects. But we are also concerned about further encroachment by Russia into Ukraine. So what I announced and what the European Council announced was that we were consulting and putting in place the framework, the architecture for additional sanctions, additional costs, that should Russia take this next step. What we also said, and will continue to say, is that there is another path available to Russia. The Ukrainian government has said it is prepared to negotiate with Russia, that 